what I want to talk about today is developing a palette for a painting. So here's my reference photo, a sunset over Lake Dove uh, in Cra Cradle Mountain in Tasmania. Beautiful spot and it's got a lot of those sunsetty colours, reds, purples, pinks and then some more blues up in the sky. And I'll just talk about how we develop the palette so that we're not confused when we're starting the painting. Now for this painting I've got several boxes of pastels out just as a starter. This is my general work box which is a mix of a number of brands of pastels and so I've just broken them and mixed them up amongst there so I've got soft and hard, I've got a cool and warm, I've got light to dark in various sets of pastels just broken up there together. The other box I've got is a, a Terry Ludwig set of um, landscape pastels, they're a set chosen by Richard McKinley, beautiful set and I'll be using some of those colours too, there's some lovely colours in here for the sky and some mountains and uh, a few that I'll probably use in the water there. And my other box I've got out is a set of very dark colours, uh, these are a Sennelia set and you can find all that information on my website. So these I'll be using some of the darks from. Now I could just start the painting and, and pull things out of the boxes as I'm going but that can be quite slow and sometimes I like to create a palette before I start. So I might use something like this, just a plain white plate. So then I'll be looking at the reference photo, pulling out colours I think are going to work and testing them on a scrap of paper next to uh, my painting area. And that means I've got a ready reference there when I'm painting, but I've also got my palette chosen here. And that will make it easier to get most of the colours in without having to keep going back and forth and losing track of what I'm doing. It'll give me a much more fluid painting experience. That doesn't mean that I'm limited to that. Once I've started, I can use for my palette and then I can add things as I want to, but it will speed up the process somewhat. So what I would do for this one up here is start looking at the sky, thinking what I might use for the sky, and then the sunset clouds, use what I'll be using for those, and a lot of those colours will be reflected back down into the water, so they'll be very similar colours. Then I'll choose a palette for the mountains and the palette for the vegetation around here and the rocks, and lastly the um, little shed there. So that's how I would approach it. So let's just get on with that now. I'm going to start up with the sky. So I'm going to be using some uh, some of the sky colours and I'll just try, yeah I think that's going to be the blue. So that one's going to go on my tray for the blue. So that one will just go on my tray and I'll just set up a tray here. Um, there's a lighter blue I will want as I go further down. And I'm just going to use the Terry Ludwig's ones for this. Yep, that, that's going to work. And then a very light one, which will be this one. And so I think that will give me the tones for the sky. So there's my sky sitting there already. Nicely done. Or anyway, it's the blues from the sky. The only trouble with using this method is then you've got to find out where to put them back. But i um, fortunate with the Terry Ludwigs, they're new, so I haven't broken any of them yet, I don't think. And they're square, so they're different than all of my round pastels, so it'll be very easy to pop those back in. So there we are, just to simplify the process once you start a painting, it's easy to build a palette on some separate container, test them out next to where you're going to be painting, in separate areas for your, um, in separate areas so that they match up to the areas that you're going to be doing over there. So that's really quick, easy during the painting just to reflect back and think, ah, yes, they're the blues, they're the blues. And so I've kept them into little groups on my palette as well. No doubt they'll get a bit messed up as I paint <laughs> uh, in the throes of it all, but it's a good way to start. And then I'll keep my photo reference up here so I can look at that, look at my palette tester sheet there and look at my palette as I go. And I've got my other boxes of pastels down here ready to choose out extra ones as I need. So I hope you find that useful and maybe the next painting you do you can try building your palette before you start the painting and see how that helps you move seamlessly through the painting more fluidly and being able to express yourself without all the interruptions of trying to search through your boxes for the right colour. Hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time in the studio. Bye for now.